Welcome to the Champion Breakdown, where we highlight the gold nuggets, the tips and tricks to help you become the best version of yourself in your journey to becoming a champion. Welcome to the Julia Breakdown. How amazing was she? Well, of course, I'm going to say that she's my sister too, but she's, <laughs> she's my so favorite. Good. <laughs> she's my favorite ski racer of all time. Because of who she is. Yeah. I mean, she has so many good lessons that I feel like all of us can learn. She's such an inspiration to so many people. And um, I don't know, I just loved everything she said. It's hard to pick out um, a couple of the key points, but. I feel like there's this quote, I don't know who said it, but I stay, no, I stay prepared. What is it? So that I I don't have to get prepared. Something like that. That one. I feel like her story talking about, um, I mean, the thing, okay, first of all, the thing that surprises me about Julia the most and why she's one of my favorite athletes of all times is that she just pulls it out when it counts in front of the world stage, like world championships, Olympics all the time. And it is shocking to me. Um, but after even, I mean, she's been a friend forever, but after listening to her talk through the process in this podcast, I was like, oh, okay. It's that quote, you know, she's been working on her visualizing, her vision boarding, her manifesting, her talking to herself. Like, it's not like she just did it like the year of the Olympics. She's been doing it for years. And then in her hardest times, that's when she drew on it to bring her through to ultimately be victorious. Yeah, exactly. It's like doing all the work, um, mentally, physically, all those, all the things when you're not kind of like in the arena so that when you're in the arena, you don't even have to think about it. They just all come naturally and and see her goofing around and wearing Wonder Woman stuff and tiaras and, you know, doing all these things that make her feel joy and happy. Like it's totally for her more than, you know, to get that feeling. And you might think like, oh, she goofs around and does, but she works so hard. And I loved hearing how hard she works in the mind. I know. It is really funny that you say that because if you guys haven't heard her, her story, you can actually go and listen to her podcast. It's called Just Be Yourself with Julia Mancuso. And she talks about when she met her husband, Dylan Fish. And, and that's actually the exact thing that you just said. Like she showed up in her tiara and her Wonder Woman suit. And he was like, who is this? Like, I want nothing to do with that scene. But it really was. It's not like just getting out there being showy. It's literally because she's like, this is fun for me. So I'm going to just go have fun and not worry about what people think. And I think that sometimes worrying about what other people think hold us back a lot. And she definitely does a great job of not worrying about that. And that's why she does have so much choice. She's a very happy person, even, Mm -hmm. you know, off camera. (laughs) Yeah. And I love, you know, her podcast name, Just Be Yourself is really so perfect for her because that's what she's done. And even when she talked about, um, you know, her rituals for what she did, she's really figured out her own self and you young athletes listening here. um, This is like your, you know, it's a process. It won't just come overnight. Um, Like for instance, I was surprised that Julia doesn't really you know, use music to amp her up. Um, We just found out my seven-year-old does. He just put, we put some earphones in when he was skating and he freaking ripped all these tricks he'd never pulled before. And I was like, okay, so he's different than Julia. Now we know. Um, But I love that she's just figured herself out. Yeah, she's really good at that and and following her intuition. And, and she talked about that, just, you know, trusting yourself. And I think as you young athletes, like you have that innate ability to have you have that intuition and you have that trust. And what happens as you get older is people will start to tell you otherwise, and it makes you start to doubt that. And so really just remembering that you yourself, you do know best. And, um, and I think that you know, actually Billy talked about that too, is just knowing when to go, you know, on a, on a wave or whatever it was and trusting himself when that time was right. And so you guys just have to remember that you do know best. And so, um, just if you can continue to harness that intuition throughout your career, that's going to be something that's going to be really key for your success for sure. Yeah. What else? There was so much good stuff, but I think they're the key things. Oh my gosh. Remember when she was talking about how you learn more from your failures than, than your successes. And 
I think that's something that can also be really hard to do because you can just focus on the failure at, and think that it's a failure, but it's really, and I tell my kids this all the time, it's only a failure if you don't learn from it. So if something bad happens or if you don't get the whatever you're going for and if you sit there and dwell on that, like I'm horrible, I'm a failure, whatever, then, then you, then that truly, that situation truly is a failure. But if you can say, okay, I didn't, you know, win this competition that I wanted to, or, you know, whatever it is that you're in in your mind is the failure. If you look at it and say, what did I learn from that? Then that's where you find the success. And that is the success. And, and turning your, seeing success in your failures is a great thing to be able to do because you all are going to have failures if you haven't had any yet. Maybe it's been all failures, but that's why they say, what is success? Success is failing your way to the top. Literally, that's what it is. Yes. And uh, when she talked about hating the drills as well, I thought as a ski racer, I thought that was really encouraging because you don't have to love every single thing about whatever your passion is. Just, I think that was kind of liberating. You know, often we think like, oh, but you've got to love it. You've got to have fun. And um, that was surprising to me. I had no idea she hated the drills until she figured out like, you know, what worked for her, but just don't give up yet. If there's something that doesn't sit right with you, I guess that was the message that I got. <laughs> yeah. And that's so that happens all the time. Like it's always fun to go and do the competitions or even, you know, if we're talking specifically about ski racing to go out there and train or go out there and free ski, but the grind, the things that are really hard and it's the drills, you know, that can be drills in whatever sport you're in. Those are never fun, but to realize that there's a purpose for them. And I think that's what she was kind of saying too, that once she realized there was a purpose for him, she realized, okay, I am going to do these and I'm going to do them well. Um, I think that can make such a big difference because I, I know that you see it in your kids. I see it in my kids all the time. They want to go. Okay. So for example, my oldest is really into baseball. He loves to go to the games. He even loves to go to the practice because, you know, it's social and with his friends and they do fun things at practice, but sitting at home, hitting his ball off the tee over and over again, he's like, he knows that he should do it, but he's like, Ugh, I don't want to do it. And I'm, you know, it's a, it's a hard thing to teach because it, but it really is important. And so I think that what she said was really great. And I, and as soon as she said, I'm like, oh, I need to talk to my kids about that is that I need to, to tell them the why, because sometimes I think that happens as parents, we just tell them to go do things and we don't tell them the why behind it. And then we expect them to just get it. But actually kids need to know what is the why behind it. And it sounds like that's what happened to her. Once she realized what the why was behind it, it gave her more of a desire to go do it. Yes. And when we know the why, we really can do anything with a bit of grit. And um, <laughs> and I think, you know, our podcast here, we it's called I Am a Champion. But really, if you've started to clue in now, it's not about the gold medals. It's, it's so much more about like, we want a platform for you young humans to come and connect with and literally learn how to be your best selves. And what, you know, whatever you go on to do in life, even if you become um, a champion in your sport, there's still going to be a life after that. And just knowing that everything you're doing now, all the hard work, all the work in the dark, all the failures, all the not giving up, it's going to give you so much in life for you to draw on when you're running a business, when you're in med school, when you are whatever it is that you choose to do, it's you're going to use all these skills and tools. Just trust us. Stay with it. It's the process, you guys. It's the journey in the process. Okay, well, thank you so much for listening to the Julia Breakdown today. And we can't wait to see you next Monday um, for our next champion. See you guys then. 